Hello, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and welcome to the next episode in my series on configuring Pop! OS. In this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about Tilix, which is a terminal emulator that follows the GNOME human interface guidelines and that I use personally as my terminal. So it has some basic tiling window or some tiling features as well as tabbing, and it has a Quake terminal as well, which means the way I have it set up, if I hit F12, I can have a terminal pop down and then I can close it with F12 again and it'll save its state. And it's useful just to have a, a random persistent like scratch terminal just to keep press away. So in this video, I'm gonna sh walk you through setting that up and getting this all installed and configured the way that I like it. So first things first, we are obviously going to want to install our application. So Windows T is going to launch our terminal emulator. And we are going to do a sudo apt-get install Tilix. OK, Tilix is now installed. So we can just launch it by going over here and finding Tilix, just like that. Now. Let's do a little bit of configuration before we get too deep into this. Personally, I am a fan of a slightly more minimalistic, minimalist aesthetic. So you can tell that this is the, uh, the default way that Tilix looks. And if I bring in the one from my actual computer, you can see it has a much more minimal looking interface. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the settings here and clear out some of this unnecessary UI clutter that we can do here. So we wanna go over here into preferences. We got this configuration issue. Uh, this is regarding VTE config. Just hit say don't show again and hit okay. At some point I'll do a video on how to fix that. It's a little bit more complicated. And the, the big thing that that's going to prevent you from being able to do is it will prevent Tilix from being able to send notifications to the, the GNOME notification center. That's all that that's about. And personally, that's not a feature that I care much about. So I haven't really bothered to, to fix it. Everything else should work just fine if you ignore that. Anyway, I'm gonna go over here into appearance and we can start tinkering with how all kinds of neat configuration things for um, for Tilix. So we're going to uncheck show terminal title, even if it's the only terminal. And we are going to check use tabs instead of sidebar. And that's going to require an application restart. So doing that, we'll close Tilix, relaunch it. And there you go. So we now have a, a much less cluttered uh, UI. Now, for the actual Quake terminal, what you have to do is you have to run the command Tilix Quake like that. And you run that one time and it'll pop up and you run that again and it goes away. So this is a bit of a toggle. Right. Now, we're going to want to bind that to a keystroke so that when we press the key, that toggles. The way you can set up key bindings is in settings. So if you go into GNOME settings, go to keyboard shortcuts, this is a list of all the keyboard shortcuts that are built into GNOME by default. And you can of course tweak these as you like. What we're gonna do is go all the way to the bottom and hit this plus sign to add a new one. And I'm gonna call this Quake Terminal. The command is going to be Tilix minus minus Quake. And the shortcut, I like to use F12. So I'll just say F12 for that and hit add. And there you go. Now when you hit F12, there it is. Hit F12 again, and it goes away. Now we can actually further configure the Quake terminal's appearance here. So what I like to do is I like to make the width a bit smaller so it doesn't take up as much space, as well as make the height a bit smaller. So we can get it a little bit down to size there so it doesn't just cover up everything uh, that we are working on. Right. The other thing you may want to do, at least I like to do it, 
is to hide the the title bar on the quick terminal. I don't need it. And again, it's more UI clutter. So if you want to hide that, all you have to do is in the quick settings here, click on hide the toolbar. And then when you hit F12 or whatever your key bindings happen to be, you now just have this nice, nice clean empty terminal window and your keystroke will toggle it on and off. Now, the only thing that remains to do is to set Telex as our default terminal emulator, um, or at the very least make it so when I hit um, Windows T, rather than getting the GNOME terminal, I would like a Telex window to pop up. So that's the next thing we'll do is configure that. So in order to set Telex as our default terminal, we are going to have to dive onto the command line given the fact that we are configuring a terminal emulator. That should be not too big of a deal. Now the command that we are going to need to use here is update alternatives. Uh, so sudo update alternatives config x terminal emulator exactly as you see here. Now when you run this command it's going to basically pop up a list of the different terminal emulators that the command can find on your system, each of them with a corresponding number and ask you which one you want to have as the default. So just to confirm this, right now if I do Windows T, you can see I'm launching my GNOME terminal. Now I want Telex, so I type 2 for Telex. Obviously you want to find Telex in here and type the selection number corresponding to it. It's not. It might not necessarily be a 2. In any case, type 2, hit enter, and now when I type Windows T, I see Telex. So I've now configured Telex as my default terminal. And that is about all there is to it. So we have installed Telex, we have stripped the interface to the bone, we have configured it as our default terminal, and we have also set up a keyboard shortcut for our drop-down Quake terminal as well. I hope that you found this interesting, and I will see you in the next video as we continue our exploration of Pop! OS.